Hello Soul Diggers, welcome to another episode with me your host Kim Mellor live from Bali and it's my absolute honour and privilege to introduce our next guest. So Chantal Raven has played a pivotal role in my evolution of me stepping into my feminine and really feeling empowered as a woman and a queen. And actually one of my very first tantric experiences was held by Chantelle. She's an incredible facilitator. And when I broke up from my ex-partner back in November 2019, I bought a one-way ticket to Bali and I was like, I need to get myself in a tantra retreat. And <laughs> Chantelle has literally had such an impact in my life. I'm so excited to share her energy and her words of wisdom with you all. So just before I do the formal introduction, Chantelle really is someone who embodies the queen energy. She really is an empowered woman who comes from a place of being a sovereign being. And all of this language a year ago, I had absolutely no idea about. And what I've realized over this past year is development is so much more than logical. It's about embodying. And I feel like this queen energy, this feminine essence is, is reprogrammed my nervous system. And I find it really hard to like overly hustle anymore. And I'm just forever thankful and grateful to Chantel for giving me that amazing gift. So the actual bio is Chantelle has been facilitating workshops and retreats in the field of spirituality and Tantra for almost 20 years. Oh my goodness. A former teacher of personal development in the new age tradition. She spent these last two decades diving deeply into meditation, self-inquiry and philosophy and all things Tantra. She's a teacher, a practitioner, and is just on a mission to empower the world and just really give back. I really feel your energy, Chantelle, is about service and allowing people to really step into their power. And this woman's knowledge and passion is so inspiring. She will make you look at your love life, your sex life, your spirituality, and she really wants you to step into the highest version of yourself. Wow, I could talk for hours about you, but I would love for you to say hi. <laughs> hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for the lovely introduction, Kim. It's good to, oh. good to be here with you. Yeah, and honestly, it, it comes from such a heart-centered place. I, I feel like I've been wanting and searching for this for almost the whole of my life. Mm -hmm. And I think in most of my relationships, something was always missing. And it was that intimacy, that, that tantric element that I had no idea even existed. And as soon as I left my relationship, I was like, I was in search of this feeling, which you are one of those people who's, who's helped to give me that. <sighs> so would you mind sharing a bit about your story and any kind of potent parts that have helped you to get to where you are today? <sighs> so... I think really in terms of the queen energy, that's the focus of what we're talking about, yeah? Mm. It's really the, the most pivotal shift in my life when I stopped trying so hard, when I realised that I didn't have to be this ideal woman. You know, I spent most of my 20s striving to be like the perfect mother, the perfect student, the perfect teacher, the perfect coach, the perfect wife and reading so many books and listening to lots of audios and attending conferences as well as speaking at conferences. And, and I, I really just felt this anxiety or sadness that I couldn't explain whenever I was alone at night, you know, when the lights were out and nobody was watching I had this feeling of not being good enough, of like reviewing my day based on all of the things I could have done better or conversations and interactions I had with people where maybe they were displeased with me or I felt rejected and going, oh, how was that my fault? What do I need to change? And, you know, just having this uncomfortable feeling that really when I look back in hindsight was based on this huge perfectionist who thought that I needed to get everybody's approval and validation and that wanted to portray myself in a certain way. And underneath that perfectionist was just this young girl who, yeah, didn't, didn't feel good enough. And I find that this is the case with a lot of women that I work with. You know, they, they have this feeling of not being good enough and 
And then on the outside, they're striving and they're trying and they're, they're doing all the things, but actually the two are completely opposite to each other. What's happening on the outer and what's happening on the inner. And my journey into marrying those two together and embodying self-love and coming into my queendom was really being able to hold that part of me, love and accept that part of me that didn't feel good enough and really learn to show up for the parts of me that felt sad, that felt anxious, that felt angry, not from a place of trying to fix myself, but from a place of just letting that be there, really letting that be there. And, you know, you've, you've been to a, a few different retreats now and you know that this is what I'm most passionate about teaching is really allowing the pain to be there. And, you know, we're in this, we're in this world where pain is seen as something bad and we have to figure out what to do with it. And all of the marketing for everything is like, this is going to make you better. It's going to make you either look better or grow spiritually or, you know, the spiritual marketplace. It's like well-meaning teachers are saying, you know, do you want to be happy? Do you want to feel in your joy all the time? And it's like, that's impossible. It's a, it's a false promise. It's like by virtue of being human, there's going to be times that are difficult and there's going to be times that are amazing. We have this dark and light duality. And really suffering doesn't come from pain. It comes from resistance to pain because pain is just energy. And, you know, this can be hard for some listeners to get their head around. But actually when you're not going into addictions to avoid your pain, that really don't serve you, when you're not running away from people who love you because you don't want to feel your pain, when you're not grasping for people who you feel don't love you because you don't want to feel your pain, all of these behaviours are creating the very thing that we're trying to avoid, which is self-hatred. It just creates more of it because whenever we're come, moving from a place of wanting to avoid our pain and controlling our reality, guess what? we just recreate the pain cycles, you know. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, if, if you have a physical wound of some sort and you just keep putting a Band-Aid over it and that physical wound is coming from an internal disorder, you know, the wound's just going to keep showing up even though you're covering it up with a Band-Aid or maybe medication, you know. So the paradigm that I'm most passionate about taking people into, especially women, from princess to queen is this space of choosing courage over comfort firstly and secondly really following your bliss sincerely so it's like okay we can follow our bliss from a place of escaping our pain or we can follow our bliss from a space of deep attunement and the two are very different so one is coming from a stress response and the other one is coming from feeling into our hearts, feeling into our desires and saying, what, what, where does my energy want to flow right now? Do I want to go to the beach? Do I want to read my book? Do I want to do some work? Do I want to connect with a sister? And people don't know how to relax and just like be in their joy because they're too busy protecting themselves from pain. <laughs> and, and I just... You know, I used to be in it, so I get it. But I also just now find it quite comical. And, you know, when I was diagnosed with cancer in my early 30s and I'd been doing all this personal development and affirmations and meditation and EFT, emotional freedom technique, my dad was an EFT master. I was like, okay, I understand quantum physics and I understand that what's going on emotionally and energetically manifests physically. So I knew, right, if I have cancer in my feminine power center, there's something that needs looking at here. And maybe the techniques I've been using, which were all very masculine, by the way, are not quite cutting it. So I just knelt before my altar and I prayed, which is something I do. And, and said, please, you know, like I invited grace into my life and just said, please show me what needs to be seen that I'm not seeing? 
lead me in the right direction. And a few days later, I was picking my daughter up from Steiner School, which is an alternative system of education. I'm a trained Steiner teacher. And I was sitting on the grass and, you know, people who go to alternative schools, the parents are usually a bit more hippie or alternative. So, you know, I'm sitting there and not, not feeling the best and, you know, quite, quite scared with the news of cervical cancer. And someone picked up on that. So she sat in front of me and she said, oh, you know, I'm feeling you. What, what's, what's moving for you? Do you want to share? And I said, and I, and I told her about it. And she said, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. My ex is in town. He's a shaman next week. He's a shaman. He travels around the world healing people from cancer shamanically. And I didn't even know what that really meant. And she said, you know, like it's about energy and using different energetic techniques to, to support healing. So I had a session with him, it went for five hours and my life completely changed forever. And he basically made me aware of how much anger I had inside. And I found out that he was also a tantric master and then he introduced me to tantra teachers and so began the journey into my emotional body, into my sexual body. I remembered sexual trauma that I'd completely repressed and entered a space of no longer bypassing my emotions under the guise of like meditation and affirmation like those things are amazing but they're not the whole piece and you know what I was doing when emotions were coming up was like meditating watching the emotions but not feeling them so they were stuck in my cells or you know I was looking at it from the perspective of wherever that charge was initiated from like conversation person event giving it forgiveness, giving it love. Oh, I trust this is all meant to be. And again, these principles are great, but they're not the full piece. We need to feel everything fully. We need to be willing to feel everything fully. And until we are, we can't live in the moment. We can't be present with ourselves. We're going to be in the past, still holding on to things that we haven't been able to release from the body, or we're going to be in the future, controlling our realities so that we don't have to feel those things again which inevitably pop up for the reasons I said earlier. So yeah, that's that's probably a long answer to your short question. <laughs> wow, there's so much to unpack there. I mean, when you said suffering comes from the resistance to pain, I was like, oh, yeah, my whole upbringing was don't feel, don't feel. If you've got nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. I never saw my mum or dad get emotional whatsoever. And I can remember even when, uh, my granddad sadly passed away. My mum was just cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. And if, everything's fine, everything's fine. And I, I was like, wow, wow. You know, why do we like suppress so many of these emotions? Like, where's that come from? Well, it comes from a overemphasis on the mind, right? Like if you look at the values that we have as a collective, if you look at the education system, it's like learn through the mind, learn through the mind, learn facts and then spew them out. And there's not a lot of room for any education around the feelings. We don't know what to do with our feelings, right? And then our parents, often when we're young, if we're throwing a tantrum, they're like, stop doing that. Or if we're crying, we're like, oh, sh 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 it's gonna be okay. And we're given a lollipop or distracted. Or, you know, go to your room until you feel better. So we get this message early on that everything needs to be in this box of everything's okay. And that's, yeah, that's because this is, this is the only education that we have available to us. You know, if you, if you look at Hollywood movies, if you look at the education system, if you look at government structures, where in any of this are we given permission to really feel at a raw and authentic level. And, and you know, there's, there's a wave in, in, in social media where being real and authentic is becoming popular. But what I notice with that is that real and authentic now is seen as the hard stuff, right? But real and authentic can also be the joy. So there's still this separation between not feeling good and feeling good right if we're not feeling good we're being real and raw on social media if we're feeling good 
then we're an object of comparison for people who aren't feeling good. And there's just all of this, all of this pressure and spirituality adds to that, you know, a lot of spirituality. It's like, okay, how can you feel bliss? How can you not react? How can you be this person who's always in a space of forgiveness and unconditional love? And again, it's, there's well-meaning teachers who are sending this message, but I certainly, you know, in my 20s, it gave me such a great framework for having a positive outcome focus towards life and a capacity to be grateful and, yeah, to look at things objectively, and I, pre I appreciate all of that. But it also led to me just beating up on myself whenever I was human, right? It's like, of course, we're going to go into reaction. And there are tools so that when that reaction comes up, we don't have to be an asshole, right? We can feel that reaction and honor that and go into the body and feel what it reminds us of and, and start to release a lot of the pain from ourselves so we stop attracting more of the pain. And, you know, that, that's a deeper, a deeper discussion. But as, as you know, Kim, you know, part of my mission on the planet is to support people to feel what's underneath that, what's underneath that, what's underneath that. And the reason for that is, it's like we come into the world and we're, we're love, you know? We're just this being of love that doesn't know right and wrong, that cries when we're upset, that screams <laughs> when we're frustrated, that laughs, that's curious, that's looking at the world in wonder, and we're in present time awareness, which is what we all want, really. You know, Power of Now was so popular because we all want to be in this moment. But we can't just click our fingers and be in this moment because what happens is as trauma hits our body, as we see our parents fighting, as, you know, we see that heaven doesn't exist on earth in that same way where there's no there's no evil, there's no shadow, then we start to go, fuck, this is scary sometimes. And then, you know, when traumas come into our body and we're not able to get away or we're not able to fight, then all of that gets stuck and all of this trauma builds and all of this, all of the beliefs, maybe we're told, you know, you're, we're bullied or we're told we're overweight or not pretty enough or all of that. So if you can imagine when we're born, we're like this empty tunnel and it's easy to see the light at the end of the tunnel because the tunnel's clear. So when you look into a baby's eyes, there's so much innocence and beauty because you're just seeing through that empty tunnel that's not filled with all of the debilitating beliefs and soft and hard traumas that we accumulate over time. And then those beliefs and soft and hard traumas, they start to fill up the tunnel with a lot of rubbish and junk, right? So you can't see the light anymore it's, and, and we start to get sluggish and we start to get tired. And, you know, we're made up majority of water and water can't flow. Life force energy, kundalini energy can't flow through the tunnel any, anymore. And then we start to get physical ailments because the tunnel is so clogged. So what we want to do is we want to come in and clean out that tunnel. And what cleans out the tunnel is water, Right a blast of water through that tunnel that's like coming through and cleaning it out. And what that water is, it's the emotional body. It's life force energy. It's turning our awareness into the breath. Ah, using sound and starting to empty out all of those frozen parts of ourselves that are stuck in time, that haven't been able to scream, that haven't been able to cry, that haven't been able to run, and also that haven't been able to feel pleasure, that haven't been able to laugh, that, you know, some people's joy and pleasure is even more repressed than their grief and their rage. So once that tunnel, we're committed to clearing that, we can actually be in present time reality. And, you know, most of the time, I spent a lot of time processing my past, but I feel like I'm pretty up to date for the most part. Sometimes my sexual abuse comes up, but pretty up to date. and. It's funny because processing just whatever happens day to day is so much easier. It passes really, really quickly. It's like, oh, okay, that pissed me off. <sighs> Shake the body a little, maybe like scream into my hand. Oh, okay, that's gone. But there was so much Deborah's in the past, you know, now I'm 43. 
and I've been practicing on a daily commitment, you know, feeling my emotions every day. So it's taken about 10 years for me to feel as clear as I feel now. And that commitment was absolutely worth it. And commitment is essential. So now at 43, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly up to date. The, the sexual abuse is definitely something that comes up. And, you know, when I was being sexually abused, it was when my dad was away. So whenever my partner speaks about going away anywhere, then that fear comes up that I'm going to be sexually abused, even though it makes no sense to my logical mind. So I just go in and I hold that little girl and I let her shake and I let her feel. And I say to her, hey, you know, all that's over now and we're here. And if, if Aaron goes away, that doesn't mean you're going to be hurt, but it's hard, you know, it still takes me into dark places that are hard to feel. And then more light burbs at the other end of that. So, you know, the journey into closing the eyes and actually seeing the darkness and being willing to check out what's going on inside and vibrate that through the body is absolutely worth it. And I feel more vital, more energetic and more beautiful and more self-love at 43 than I have in my whole life. And I actually think that if I look back on photos, yeah, I had more youth in my skin, obviously, but I look and I'm like, I'm more beautiful now than when I was trying to be beautiful because the beauty that comes and in internally and then radiates externally and shines from the inside out comes from a woman who's learned how to hold herself in her darkness and not avoid it through emotional eating or social media addiction or a love addiction or, you know, smoking pot, drinking, whatever it is. And it goes for men as well. We spend so much time avoiding our pain with these addictions that do harm to us when the solution is so simple, simple but profound. And that's just be here with yourself. But it's not easy. It's not an easy journey because we're taught how to live in the mind and the mind wants to find solutions and analysis and, and you know, what, what, can I, what can I do about this? And if you think about it, until we're 18, sometimes in our 20s, if we get a degree, I spent seven years, I got a law degree, honours in philosophy, and then a certificate for in anthroposophy, right? Educated to the hilt. What a great way to not have to feel, to just keep learning through the mind. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I, I had the consciousness tools, which most people don't have, which was marvellous. But when I was sad, when I was angry, when I was feeling the feelings that were harder to feel, I didn't know what to, what to do with that. So, yeah, I would just read books or go into my addictions. And my biggest addiction was definitely love addiction. <laughs> Putting my attention on whatever man was the flavour of the, of the month, the year, whatever it was at the time. And, and cigarettes, you know, I used to smoke. And because that, that, then I could breathe, you know. <laughs> The thought of smoking now makes me want to throw up, but it's actually, I wasn't breathing into my belly. I was breathing in my chest. And for the listeners, if you just notice right now where you're breathing as you're listening and, you know, the journey of Tantra is coming home to the body. It's being able to notice the breath. It's being able to receive the world around you. It's being able to feel what's arising, follow our bliss, listen to our pain. You know, our pain is there to tell us things. It tells, it tells us when boundaries need to be set. It tells us when we're ready to leave a job or a relationship, but we don't, we don't fucking listen. We just go into the mind and run away or fight or a combination of both and hang on for dear life to jobs and relationships because anything's better than being alone. <laughs> so we settle for jobs and relationships that aren't in full alignment with us because it's the salvation of the soul that's not willing to look at the ultimate fear, which is the fear of death, you know, the fear of our aloneness, the fear of the darkness behind our closed eyes. So before we continue, I have some very exciting news. So when I created this podcast back in April 2020, I had the vision of having 111 five-star reviews and we absolutely smashed it. And this year I wanted to up the game and triple that. So the goal for this year is 333 five-star reviews and we are so on track 
for hitting that. We've just achieved our 150th five star review and I'm going to read it out right now. This is from Rachel Emma Ryan. So if you are listening to this, please reach out and message me. I will give you a free coaching call just for being the 150th comment. She says, I am in awe of your passion for life and I can't wait to learn so much more from you. You're inspiring, relatable, down to earth and such a genuine person. This podcast is my favorite. Oh my goodness, thank you so, so much, Emma. I really appreciate you. Um, Please do reach out to me and let's get on a call and let's carry on the interview. Wow. I feel like you've just described my whole life. (laughs) Because the same, you know, my suppression came out in love addiction, shopping, partying, all of those toxic relationships I surrounded myself, like really numbing myself because I didn't, I was afraid to feel. And then looking back on all my relationships, I definitely stayed in most of them for too long. And I can remember in my last partnership, we used to just like joke about, isn't it amazing how we never argue? And we could hear the next door neighbors like arguing and expressing. And I was like, oh, we don't even argue. And looking back now, I'm like, oh my God, we were so numb. (laughs) We're just not not expressing any kind of emotion. And the level of uh, depth of grief you feel is a level of joy you can feel. So what I'm realizing with Tantra is if I want to experience more joy and more pleasure, I have to allow myself to be angry and express it and, and, and welcome it. <laughs> so it's so funny looking back. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the, the next step to that is, and I, and I understand your framing of it, and it definitely was my framing of it. It's like, we're still going, the mind is still going, oh, to get more pleasure, I have to feel more pain. There's still an attachment to feeling the pleasure right it's very subtle but just if we're just ourselves which is the queen if i'm just myself there's pain sometimes and there's pleasure sometimes and it's just is that that's it and we're here feeling everything fully and comfortable to be ourselves because we no longer have a judgment on having to be anywhere where we're not and that's true self-love so you know another thing I see that's become popular is you know self-love is going to get massage and you know doing a job that you love and creating your dream life and yeah all of that is wonderful but actually it's just another veil of illusion if we're not really loving all the parts of ourselves that feel not good enough that are in the in the grief are falling apart and the parts that are full in their pleasure and joy. So yes, the level to which you can feel your pleasure is the level to which you can feel your pain, but equally the level to which you can feel your pain is the level to which you can feel your pleasure. And actually I love to be able to feel my pain fully and feeling my pleasure fully is just as much of an incentive for me in terms of feeling my pain fully as the other way around because there's a joy in feeling painfully. It feels so fucking liberating when you can just be like, oh, let it rip through you. And you get so much energy and creative juice. Or when you can just cry, you know, how good do you feel when you just have a good cry? And, and it, it can be orgasmic. And I know that sound that can sound a bit crazy, but actually I've had experiences of crying or raging where my whole body is tremoring. And I feel unstoppable. You know, I just feel this course of energy that is rippling through my body. And I know that I'm alive in the same way as with pleasure. So again, it's only when we contract against pain or we're resisting it that they're suffering. Mm. But if we're letting it flow, it's fucking invigorating, right? I, I used to do express and release in the ocean when, <laughs> when, I, when I had a lot of like every day, just so much fucking rage. It was unbelievable. And I'd just get in the ocean. I'd smash the waves with my hands and just like go under the water and scream and then above the water. And I'm sure people thought I was crazy, but I didn't care because I could just feel this part of me that had been frozen for such a long time that was finally coming to life. And that was orgasmic. That was 
that was really, really enjoyable. And, you know, if I go into the pain now through the mind, you know, arguing with my partner or, you know, trying to fix my kids or whatever it is, then, yeah, I suffer against that resistance and I get tired and I feel blocked in my creativity. And then it's like, oh, okay, Raven, what are you doing? <laughs> Close the eyes, breathe into the body and I let it all feel. And then the body just tells me, the next step you know and it's not about dwelling in the pain because actually after you let it rip through your body then it's like okay then a powerful message will come through and I can serve with more clarity or you know I can ask myself what needs to change in my life you know pain sometimes a message that something needs to change or as I was saying like the boundary needs to be set or that I'm fucking exhausted and I haven't given myself time to be in nature or to just go outside and read my book. It's like, wow, underneath all of that is just exhaustion. And if I didn't vibrate that pain through my body, I wouldn't have got to that. And there are times when I, I'm feeling a bit off or I'm feeling tired. I don't even know what the pain is about. <sighs> I start breathing, exhaling with sound. That's like, oh, okay, that's what that's about. So, you know, diving into the body is diving into the mystery and discovering, truly discovering ourselves. So meditation is beautiful. And also when we make meditation a more somatic experience or body-based experience, and we actually vibrate movement and sound through the body, as well as just sitting in stillness, then the feminine and the masculine unite more deeply within us and we become more whole. Mm. We're not bypassing anything we're being like a child which to me is like the most the most awakening we have available to us you know not child-ish but childlike where we're in wonder at the world where we're honest and naked and raw you know it's like here I am you, you don't a child says what they think and they feel and expresses that until someone tells them not to but you know that that's the closest to God you can get the younger a child is that's the closest when they, don't, when they don't have all of the conditioning and the path of Tantra is really about releasing ourselves of all of the conditioning that tells us who we are so that we can remember who we truly are. Mm. Wow, I am absolutely loving this. <laughs> I know my listeners are too. They're like, wow, we need to listen to this like 5 billion times. <laughs> Please do you guys screenshot this episode, tag Chantal and myself and let's spread this message all around the world because boy does the world need to feel to heal for sure so for the last couple of minutes could we touch on the queen and what's the difference between the princess and the queen because since your retreat it was a couple of weeks ago now called the art of loving men it was fascinating like I've never fully understood how to step into my queen energy because being a strong independent woman I can do things myself I don't need help I'll pay for myself and so what I was finding was I was attracting men that didn't want to look after me because I could look after myself. Mm -hmm. And what I'm realizing is, you know, my feminine wants to be held. It wants to surrender. It wants to be taken care of. And so now I feel like I've got a bit like a system or a checklist, which I think I needed, like the masculine part of me needed a bit of a checklist to go, okay, this is what you need to do to embody to be a queen. I feel like it's so clear. So could you elaborate on the difference between a princess and a queen and the power of stepping into that? Mm -hmm. So a princess is a lady in waiting. You know, she's waiting for the prince to come and rescue her and live happily ever after. Whereas the queen, she's not waiting for the man to show up. She's becoming the man that she wants, right? She is, she's bringing in a masculine energy that is with her and loves her no matter what. That is really loving and present in those moments that are more difficult to feel that that's one part of it the other part of it is that that masculine that she's cultivating that can witness without judgment and bring awareness to the breath and and to the body is enabling her to feel what she really needs and wants and not be ashamed of that anymore so you know when we're a princess we're like oh <gasps> We're waiting and then we want to please so we don't lose love. And the queen, she knows herself, right? She feels everything fully so she knows herself. And she's got her own man who witnesses her. So she's not coming from a place of 
trying to feel what's missing in her. She's already whole. And then she's like, but, you know, what, what I would love in a man is, you know, like what you, what you said from those spaces of dropping in, I want to be taken care of or I want a man who serves with me. I want a man who takes me on adventures. I want a man who looks gorgeous and takes care of himself, whatever it is. She's not willing to compromise, you know, on her non-negotiables. So a queen knows what's not negotiable. So for instance, you know, my not negotiables are that I need to be with a man who's in, in, held in the spirit of Tantra, in the tradition of Tantra, or it doesn't work. I've seen that, right? I need a man who loves my two children. Otherwise it doesn't work. I've tried that. <laughs> and I, I need a man who has beautiful, healthy, feminine energy. Otherwise, he's going to depend on my feminine energy. I've experienced that and I don't like that either, right? So they're my three non-negotiables. And when I met Aaron, I'm like, okay, I, I really checked out whether those three were going to be fulfilled. And then there were preferences. Like, okay, I would prefer my man to have money. I would prefer my man to dress well. I would prefer my man to, oh, and definitely a non-negotiable is lots of lovemaking and that he's an amazing lover. So you don't want to have too many non-negotiables, right? Because, you know, these are the, like, no matter what. But the ones that you know, okay, if this isn't there, and that saves you a lot of time and energy, right? And when you're feeling into your non-negotiables, ask your sexuality, ask your heart, ask your consciousness. Not, not, don't just ask one part because we're, you know, it's, we, our queen knows she deserves to be met sexually. She deserves to be met at her heart and feel safe and have her emotional needs met. And she deserves to be met mentally so that, you know, values are aligned between her and her partner. And the thing is, as long as we're a princess, we don't have the liberty of even tuning into any of that because we're willing to settle for crumbs and turn them into gold because anything is better than being stuck in the ivory tower with the wicked queen. Right? <laughs> who's badgering us so that wicked queen is the part of us that is in competition who compares who wants to show the world how much she's worth and you know fairy tales are a beautiful way to understand all all of these archetypes that we're talking about and and more you know I, I'm right into archetypes it's what I did my thesis on and part of the queen energy is really harnessing in the different archetypes and recognizing the shadows of them. So, you know, the lover archetype, our sensuality and our beauty, the warrior archetype, the part of us that's on purpose and determined to face the truth, the priestess archetype, we can do magic and place our attention on what we're wanting to create instead of what we don't want. The mother archetype that loves and nurtures and all these archetypes come together as the queen, but all of these archetypes have shadows. So it's good to know about the shadows. And I know we're coming close to end of time, but um, I've designed very detailed eight-week online courses that go deeper into all of this. And, you know, they're not your average online courses. There's video component where I'm giving teachings. There's demos. There's meditation audios. There's a live workshop material. They're fucking incredible. And they're available. So sacred sexuality, relationship tantra, ignite your power, soul-centered business. They all go into much more depth. That's always hard when I only have a short amount of time with people. And I'm like, oh, but then there's that and there's that and there's that. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad that we have this library now as part of the Embodied Awakening Academy's legacy in the world. Mm. And I'm so grateful that you have as well, because, you know, your energy, uh, you know, you need to keep some of that for yourself. You know, you're so committed to helping others that you know it's great that you've got these other tools for people to access especially if they can't be in Bali with us at this time I'm so grateful that I'm going to be with you again on Sunday for the art of loving women I'm super excited about and you've also got a retreat coming up for a week I think it's in March isn't it um April April yeah yeah I don't know the exact dates I think it's like toward the end of April yeah. amazing so I'm definitely going to look into being there for sure because I find the more I put myself in that space energetically the more it rewires my nervous system so I am so grateful for your time your energy your heart to come on here and serve my listeners and serve the world 
And I'm just so excited to be on this journey with you. Thank you for being such an inspiration and a queen and someone who I absolutely adore and look up to and can't wait to learn more from. And thank you for <laughs> guiding me back home to myself um, because it's, it's been huge. It's, it's an honour and a pleasure. I'm glad that I've been able to support you and thank you for having me. Thank you. And just so everyone can find you on social media or your websites, like... Uh, embodied awakening academy amazing yeah. fantastic so guys please share this tag Chantel. tag myself i'll put all the links in the show notes and i'm excited for you to feel everything fully and really experience everything that this life has got to offer until next time see you then wow what a juicy episode if you're anything like me you'll be obsessed with this woman and want to learn more from her and her amazing teachings she's given us a 20 percent discount code off all of her online courses just for the soul digger tribe so head over to her website i'll put the link in the show notes and input the code kim20 she also has a sacred sexuality free masterclass and gives you tantric tools that you can implement today to experience more passion and intimacy with your partner. So head over to the show notes and get yourself immersed in this woman's amazing work.